Well, Vladimir Putin has been routinely accused of, quote, hacking in the U.S. election. But he may be trying to hack U.S. energy policy as well. Recent reports by U.S. intelligence stated that the Russian government used Russia Today, its English language propaganda outlet, to air dozens of anti-fracking documentaries and stories. So if Russian support delegitimizes the presidential campaign and the Trump administration, does it also delegitimize the anti-fracking movement? Scott Edwards is co-director of the Food and Water Justice Project and an anti-fracking activist. He joins us from New York. Scott, thanks for joining us. Sure. Thanks for having me on, Tucker. So it's a, it's a simple question, and it's one mm -hmm. that we have to ask in the middle of this new Cold War. Sure. You apparently were the beneficiary of Russian propaganda. Have you or anyone at your organization had contact with Russian intelligence or members of the Russian government in the past several years? That's a, it's a, absolutely not. It's a ridiculous question. Of course we haven't. Why is it ridiculous? Why? Because we work on fracking for the very, very troubling impact it's having on American health, safety, right. and welfare. It has nothing to do with what anybody else, what any foreign leader thinks about fracking. I don't know what Putin thinks about fracking. I don't well, care what Putin what he, thinks about We do know well, what he thinks about the, you the U.S. Do. intelligence. Well, no, no, you do too. You're an American. You must have read the U.S. intelligence report on the Russian influence on the election. And it said the Russian government has mounted an anti-fracking campaign in the United States. It aired it publicly on RT, a bunch of documentaries. I'm sure you agree with them. Listen, so it's a fair question. Were you hacked as well? Absolutely not. I don't, I don't follow what Putin thinks about fracking. If you want to know what Putin thinks about fracking, perhaps you should uh, talk to Rex Tillerson. Um, he and, and ExxonMobil signed an agreement with Russian energy companies back in 2012 to start fracking in Russia. Mm -hmm. So I have no doubt that, that once the sanctions are lifted, that there will be fracking in Russia, and perhaps then Putin will be a, a fan of fracking because he'll be making money off of it. Um, we focus on fracking. It's not a political issue for us. It's not a partisan issue for us. We focus on fracking because of the documented significant impact that fracking is having on surface water, on air quality, on climate. That's why we work on fracking, not for partisan reasons, not for political reasons. Putin's views on fracking are irrelevant to our efforts. Okay, that's, I mean, that, that's a fair answer. And, I, mm -hmm. and to be totally blunt with you, I'm, I was asking half in jest because it points mm -hmm. out the ludicrous nature of the debate we're having on Russia right now. Your views happen to align with Vladimir Putin's. It doesn't delegitimize your views, to be totally uh, honest with you. Right. And I think that not all of your views are crazy, but I also think that energy extraction is always a mixed blessing. I mean, there's, there, it's never all good. There's always some risk. But given right. that fracking, whatever risks it entails has also basically made the United States energy independent and lowered the cost of energy for poor people in this country. There's a lot of goodness that comes out of fracking. Will you at least acknowledge that it's been really good for huge parts of the country and we're less dependent on the Saudis? Like, why is that bad? No, it's, it's, been, it's, it's another form of fossil fuel extraction. Well, it's yes, been it bad is, for this country. For example, in, in Pennsylvania in 2014, they released the results of 243 instances of, of groundwater drinking water contamination from, right. from the practice. If you look at uh, Wyoming, Texas, Colorado, again in Pennsylvania, Dimmick, case after case after case of how fracking is impacting uh, the, the health, safety, and welfare of, of Americans on, on, on a regular basis. A recent report last week just estimated out of the thousands and thousands of wells in this country that up to 17 percent of them are experiencing leaks on a regular basis. Um, so, so okay. it, and I, I mean, look, and I'm willing to stipulate that that's true. I mean, right. I, you know, I think you're likely overstating it, but there are risks. So why wouldn't there be? There's risk in everything. My only point to you mm -hmm. is do you see the other side? So fracking is taking place in some of the most economically depressed regions of the United States. And there's no denying that the people living there where it's been legalized have really benefited from it. these places. There are no jobs in these places at all. Now, you live in New York City among rich people. Can you at least look out and say, yeah, there's been a real upside economically? from fracking. Those people should be given jobs in renewable energy systems, not in, not in fossil fuel extraction systems. I think that we could all agree, so you we should all agree, that. I think we should all agree that as a nation, as a world, as a planet, that we'd be better off if we were 100 percent renewable solar and wind right. as soon as possible, and we put aside our fossil fuel addiction. I think that, that's that? what we should be driving okay. towards. I, I get it, but, but as right. you know, since you follow this, we're no, mm -hmm. literally nowhere near anything like that. There's no way to store that energy, as you know. So, like, let's be, can we just be real for a second? We'd all right. like to see wind and solar 
as the basis of our energy program, but we're not 10 years away from that. We're not 20 years away from that. So why can't we just say that out loud? Or do we have well, to pretend it's, it's going to happen tomorrow? We're not 100 years away from that if we allow ExxonMobil and the other energy companies to dictate what our energy policies are in this country, which is what we've been doing. I mean, we look around this world and we see a country like a highly industrial country like Germany, July 25th, uh, 2015, the summer of 2015, they, I'm sorry, 2016, they achieved 78% of their electricity needs through pure renewable energy. Small developing countries like Costa Rica is up to 99% renewable. Even Uruguay is now at that's 95%. Totally, that's, to, that's totally silly. I mean, throwing Costa Rica in a non-industrial country like I that just, is just... I just, just raised Germany. Is just Germany silly. is an industrial where, nation, where, where 78%. You where are you know, what, what I don't understand, though, Tucker, is, you know, you, you, uh, you're, you're a conservative. You believe in American exceptionalism. Why are we checking American exceptionalism at the door no, when it comes to renewable energy No, I actually believe in asking straightforward questions generation. and getting non-polemical answers. And I think you're smart enough to just give me a straight answer, but you're not. Here's one. What's, where what's, are you the, on, what's where the question? Are you on, here's a simple one. Where are you on nuclear power? We're no against, one has died. We, we, we are against nuclear power. And why would power. you be? Why would you be against you're because, You know why? Because be, your donors are against it. There's no... No, it's there's not because no our justify. donors are against it. And what's the reason? The I reason against imagine. nuclear power is because yes. nuclear waste is, is highly toxic and dangerous. Well, we want to see renewables. There's Nukes are not renewable no. power. We want to see solar. We want if to see wind. Against, we want to see geothermal. There is a literally limitless supply of the energy that comes from nuclear power. So renewable doesn't play there, into it. There's okay? a limited supply of energy coming from the sun. I would rather see sunlight providing our energy systems. But, but look, if you nukes. care about CO2 emissions, and presumably right. you do, absolutely, nuclear power produces, let's see, none. It doesn't it doesn't pollute if kept contained well, and the amount of waste actually is negligible and no one has ever died from it so why would you be a from a scientific no, perspective no one's ever why died would you from be nuclear power in this country i'm not well, aware of anyone who has right and it's a matter of time before we have more nuclear accidents it's been and we like have nuclear years. waste buried okay, out in, in, in i'm sure but but why but would we want to have radioactive waste as a, as, as a byproduct of our energy system deep in a salt mine because can, it doesn't hurt can, anyone when we can move to renewables. I mean, listen, okay. I think what we can agree, what, I think that what the basis of our disagreement is, is how quickly can we get to renewables and, and how can we create the, the drive and the motivation to get there as quickly as possible. I don't think that tomorrow we're going to wake up Saturday and have 100% renewables in this country. But so if we when? go down the when, path when that we we're going, there? well, we have, we have a goal, uh, 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 my organization has a goal that we believe that we can get to 100% renewable energy in our electricity generating sector by 2035 if we put our minds to it. Yeah. And there are do, lots now of in, the, in the meantime, do you, you, I mean, do you use cars or airplanes or anything like well, that? And of, if you of, do... Of course. I'm not, we're not well, asking I, people to go back to, to, no, to the Stone I'm not Age and living caves I mean, and you who is saying, Well, hold on. I'm, I'm uh -huh. saying not people. I mean you who thinks that those things are destroying the planet. Why not opt out of them? I, listen, we don't believe that consumers are the problem here. We're not blaming consumers. I don't. No, I don't I'm asking about you, not consumers. You personally. I am a consumer. I am a consumer. Okay, but you, right. also, so, you also and, run this and 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 so organization not, dedicated to get rid of, rid of getting rid of fossil fuels. So it's a we fair are question. dedicated to getting rid of fossil fuels and replacing it with new energy sources. Not asking people and not asking myself to go out without energy and without electricity. We understand that we live in a current situation in which we rely on cars, we rely on fossil fuels because that's how the system is now structured. We're not saying to get rid of that tomorrow and shut down our fossil fuel production tomorrow. We're uh -huh. saying that we need to transition as soon as possible for the betterment of this planet no, and I've, for our I've children and grandchildren to 100% renewable. It's a simple last, message. Can I ask you one really last question? Sure. So you're worried about fracking. It runs through these pipes. It could contaminate groundwater. You live in New right. York City. There are countless yep. sewer pipes and natural gas pipes commingled with water pipes. Are you worried about that? I mean, that seems like it would be a real risk. Uh, having I'm human waste flowing next to your drinking water. Right. That's, that's why we also work on sewage treatment systems and Clean Water Act issues and lots of other issues. Well, you still got to have sewage pipes, right? Hmm? You still got to have sewage pipes. You absolutely do have to have sewage pipes until we come it? up to a better technology. Yes, we do when we work on it. The difference between sewage pipes and fracking pipes right. is sewage pipes are regulated, highly regulated under the Clean Water Act. Okay. Listen, it was no mistake back in 2005 when, when Dick Cheney and, and, and Halliburton and his buddies 
passed exemptions okay. from literally right. every right. environmental General, law, every law Halbert. in this right, country right that heard the word clean, healthy, and safe in it for uh, the fracking industry. Uh, that's, okay. not, that's not a, an accident. All right. Scott, thanks for joining us tonight. Sure, appreciate thanks. it.